I'm Cynthia Conley. I'm the Special Projects Curator for Arlington County, Virginia. Behind me, you see the Arlington Art Truck. The Arlington Art Truck is a curated mobile toolbox for artists and residents to engage the public from April to October in interactive art projects designed specifically for Arlington residents. You will find the truck at farmers markets and festivals here in Arlington. The artists and staff are always present, so you can ask them directly about the project you see which could be an interactive sound sculpture to learning about our native plant species through a watercolor project, all designed by both the artist and I in a collaboration to support a message from a community partner, usually an Arlington County office or nonprofit. This summer, Greetings from Our Microbiome by Arlington artist Shelley Smith was moved online as a social media project where you were able to request postcard packet illustrated by Shelley showing cartouche of biological creatures from five of our waterways in Arlington. The Office of Sustainability and Environmental Management is our community partner for this project and each postcard contains a tip on how we can do our part on a daily basis to protect our waterways. We hope the Arlington Art Truck might get out onto the streets in the fall bringing a special project you can take home and make yourself called Flight by artist Greg Stewart. Find the Arlington Art Truck on Instagram at Art Truck Arlington or the Arlington Arts Instagram at Arl Arts or check us out at arlingtonarts.org. Thanks a lot and here's Shelly Smith. Hello everybody. Welcome to the Science Sketch Along. I'm Shelly Smith and I am the summer 2020 um, June and July Arlington Art Truck Artist in Residence. Today we're going to be doing a science sketch along. So we'll be looking at images of microorganisms I found in water samples throughout Arlington County um, and then sketching them. This is meant to be informal, relaxing, and introduce you to some of the wonderful uh, microorganisms that live in our environment. So make sure to have your favorite art supplies on hand and paper, um, whatever you'd like to use. And we'll chat a bit as we look at the really wonderful biodiversity that we can find in our community. And we'll learn a little bit more about my project. As I mentioned, my project was originally going to be part of events in various locations throughout Arlington County in June, July, and a little bit of August here at the um, Arlington County Fair in 2020. Due to the pandemic, we've moved everything into virtual format, um, and I'm extremely lucky that my project lends itself well to home participation. I'm a citizen scientist and an artist. My work is based on microscopic life found in water and soil samples uh, all around the world. Uh, what I did for my project is I took um, water samples from a diverse set of water sources around Arlington County. I then um, looked at those samples under my microscopes that I have and made postcards based on the microscopic life that I observed um, in the water samples. Um, we then produced souvenir postcards. Um, you can see them on the slide here. They're both uh, full color as well as black and white ones that you can color for yourself. Um, free postcard packs of my artwork are available through order by signing up through the Arlington County website. Um, at the end of our science sketch along today, I will have a link to the um, place where you can order your postcards. Um, you can also check out Arlington um, Art social media accounts like Cynthia mentioned. Um, so Arlington Art Truck and Arlington Arts, they have links in their biographies that you can also go and order postcards today. All right, excellent. So let's go ahead and let's get sketching today. So we're going to um, have sort of an informal sketching session. There'll be um, a warm up, and then we'll have five total sketching sessions. Those will actually cover um, the postcard locations. Um, each will be about four minutes long. Um, I'll keep time and I'll have like an alarm on my phone. Um, I encourage you to be creative, be creative with colors, be creative with uh, materials and that sort of thing. Um, this is all about relaxation and learning about our microbiome. 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and we'll start with a warm up to get our creative juices flowing. So um, what we have here is a water flea. So um, this is a very common multicellular microorganism. So what we'll be doing is we'll draw this for one minute and then 30 seconds and then 10 seconds. So 10 seconds goes by very, very quickly. So what I am going to go ahead and do is I'm gonna set the alarm for one minute and we'll go ahead and we will get started. All right, so pencils up. All right, so this water flea was actually found in Four Mile Run. Um, these are very, very common microorganisms. Um, a water flea is a small aquatic crustacean. Um, they live in a wide variety of environments. Um, I've found these uh, little buddies in extremely hostile conditions, like in alkali um, water sources, in highly tannic or acidic water sources. Um, they're very, very common um, and they're everywhere. Um, water fleas are a favorite food of a variety of um, larger organisms, including damselflies, which are um, a species of larvae. All right, got a few more seconds here. Okay. All right, so that is your minute. Okay, excellent. All right, so let's go ahead and try that same thing for 30 seconds. So I am going to set the timer for 30 seconds. So this will be a lot quicker, half the time. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, we're starting. All right, so um, water fleas are very sensitive organisms. They're very sensitive to changes in um, chemistry or environment. So um, they're a really good species to look at for the health and quality of the water source. Um, I also love their big lights compound eye. All right, a couple more seconds. All right. Excellent. Okay, so that was 30 seconds. Now we're going to do a really, really quick one. All right, so let's try it for 10 seconds. So just gesture drawing very, very quick. Okay, go ahead and get started. Oh my gosh, it's already done. Okay, excellent. So that's great. So that'll get us warmed up and kind of getting into the concept and idea of doing this. So, all right, let's go ahead and go forward. All right, so I'm going to set the timer for four minutes. Um, so I'll also move myself down to the bottom here so that you can see all the different microorganisms. So let me go ahead and set a timer here. All right. We have four minutes. Okay, so you are now looking at microorganisms found in the Potomac River. So the Potomac River technically isn't in Arlington. Um, technically, it's all in Washington, D.C. It's all Washington, D.C.'s territory. That said, the Potomac River is the major waterway of our area, and it really defines the landscape of Arlington County. One of the central ideas of my project is to illustrate a wide variety of waterways and um, how they kind of define the natural landscapes here in Arlington. So um, I sampled from the T Potomac River at various locations. So I've um, sampled under Chain Bridge Road. Um, I sampled at the bottom of Windy Run where Windy Run meets the Potomac. Um, I sampled um, near uh, Theodore Roosevelt Island on the Rosalind side. Um, and I sampled all throughout the year because the microbiome actually drastically changes um, throughout the year. And I wanted to kind of capture the variety that you can find in the Potomac River. On this slide, you're seeing a lot of different microorganisms. Um, primarily what you're seeing here is diatoms. 
So uh, diatoms are hard silica shelled uh, single cell algae. Um, they're one of my favorite microorganisms. They're be very beautiful. Um, they are kind of known as living sculptures. And you'll be seeing a lot of different diatoms during this session. Um, you'll also notice on this slide and in future slides that some things are labeled possibly or probably, probably, or they just have like a generic thing that says diatom on it. Um, I've done my best to identify the microorganisms, but I want to be as accurate as possible. Um, if the image quality simply wasn't good enough for me to make a definitive um, identification. I kept things on the generic side. Um, also, uh, a lot of diatoms can look very, very similar, so um, especially specific species. So um, if you have any identifications or guesses while we are doing this session today, I would love to hear them um, or put them in the comments or that sort of thing. Um, I've pretty much only identified what I'm super confident in. So you'll also notice on this slide that diatoms have this sort of yellow color to them. Um, that is uh, the uh, chemistry inside the diatom of the photosynthesizing um, chemicals. Uh, diatoms are algae. Um, they photosynthesize just like plants on the land, like trees and grass and that sort of thing. Um, sometimes diatoms are bright green, some are red, some are blue, um, and a lot of them are golden colored. So it just really depends on the uh, specific chemistry of the diatom as well as environmental conditions. Um, so yeah, you can see that there's a wide variety of things. Um, the ciliated pr pr protozoan, I'm not exactly sure which one it is, um, but I think that there are just a lot of different beautiful shapes here. Uh, the one that is up here that is kind of um, looking like it has tapered ends. Um, I think that might be a fragilaria. Um, that's what I've, I've seen others in the samples. So, yeah. All right, almost ready. All right, that is four minutes. Excellent, okay, go ahead and kind of finish up your sketch. We'll go ahead and go to the next slide here. All right, so I'll go ahead and I'll move myself back up. I'll be moving around. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer again for four minutes, so let's go. All right, so now what you are seeing is microorganisms found in Barcroft bog. Barcroft bog is a really special place. Um, it is what is called a magnolia bog. Um, magnolia bogs are defined by the presence of magnolia virginiana, um, which is a sweet bay or swamp magnolia tree. That's the common name of it. Um, they're native to this part of the world. There are actually less than 24 of these bogs um, left in the entire world. Um, they're almost exclusively found in the mid-Atlantic region right here, um, most being in DC, Southern Maryland, and Northern Virginia. Um, these are particularly um, prevalent along kind of the drainage basin in Arlington and um, Alexandria. This particular bog is located in a secluded area of Barcroft Park. Um, there are many plants in Barcroft bog that um, are only found in Barcroft bog. They are not found anywhere else um, aside from similar magnolia bogs and are really, really unique to Arlington County. Barcroft bog is actually a system of waterways. Um, it's created by um, from seeps, springs, temporary pools, tiny creeks, and drainage from the surrounding communities. Uh, Waldo McAtty, he was a prolific ecologist who studied habitats, first described these as white sand and gravel bogs as part of the US Geological Survey in the late 1910s. 
These areas used to be very common in Arlington and Alexandria, but have greatly diminished due to um, development as well as population growth. Um, Barcroft bog was actually rediscovered in 2003 by the Arlington, by, um, I forget actually who discovered it specifically, but the Arlington Parks Department has restored this habitat um, that we have today. I believe all of the diatoms that we're seeing here um, are probably some various species of Pinellaria. Um, although, as I've mentioned before, in the interest of accuracy, I've only labeled the ones I'm confident in identifying. Um, Pinellaria are primarily found in freshwater environments. <clears throat> And, um, but I found them in saltwater tide pools, in seeps, in springs as well, um, just a wide variety. Pinellaria are some of the most common and widely distributed um, diatom types, and they even live in soil. So I thought that was very, very cool. Um, what's really interesting about Pinellaria is that they store energy um, as like fats. Um, you'll be able to see in further slides Pinellaria that have like really big um, like lipid deposits in them. Uh, you can see the sort of bubbles in their shells sometimes, and those are stored fats. Um, the di diatom in the um, right here, so like in this um, area, kind of the upper right of the screen, has like the little um, globules in it, and I think that that's like a really um, good example of showing how the fats are stored. So um, there are a lot of different Pinellaria um, types found in this bog. Um, of all of my sampling locations, Barcroft bog was the most consistent over time. Um, I wonder if it's because of how unique the ecosystem is or how kind of, um, if there are other factors. So, all right, we're almost ready. All right, that's four minutes. Okay, go ahead and finish up your sketch. We'll go ahead and we'll go to the next sketch. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer for four minutes. Here we go. All right, so what you are seeing is you are seeing um, Carlin Springs. So Carlin Springs is a very interesting place. It's a natural freshwater spring. So uh, it's actually a series of springs. Um, when you visit, you'll easily what, see what you, is called the improved spring. So you can see the structure in the um, lower left-hand corner here. Um, that is the improved spring. Um, it has the structure built over it, but there there are several smaller springs around the site as well, so you'll see just water kind of trickling out of the, the rocks in that area. Um, they're pretty, this particular location is pretty easy to spot um, because it has a historical marker, first of all, and um, it also has vegetation that's very different than the shores along um, Four Mile Run um, and other, other places. So Carlin Springs has had evidence of use and habitation for a very long time, um, hundreds of years. Arlington County has several natural spring sites that still exist today. Um, many of them have long historical usage associated with them, such as um, the First Peoples or homesteads of the first um, settlers in the area. Carlin Springs in particular used to be a rather um, extensive resort, so it was a big, big resort. It had a dance hall, it had a restaurant, it had a swimming hole, it had an ice cream parlor, it had a pavilion, um, it also had a train line from neighboring communi communities that ran directly there, so it was kind of this fancy resort space. Um, as we all know, DC summers are notoriously hot and humid, um, and we're in the middle of one right now. And um, Arlington, especially before it was extensively developed, had provided locations from folks in Alexandria to escape kind of the low-lying areas and the heat associated there. There's a road called Vacation Lane here in Arlington, and it's in the um, sort of Cherrydale, Donaldson Run neighborhood. And it kind of speaks to the history of folks kind of, um, you know, using like Arlington as an escape from uh, other locations. 
So this slide is a little bit different than the other ones that you'll see because there are no diatoms on this one. Um, what I'm showing you here is a variety of other types of microorganisms. Uh, Carlin Springs changes a lot over the seasons depending on uh, light source as well as um, temperature. So um, this was very, like, there was a lot of different things depending on when I sampled. Uh, there's an arcella that's in the upper left corner, and this is actually an amoeba. These types of amoeba have hard shells made of chitin, um, just like shrimp and crabs. Um, the shell protects the soft amoeba, amoeba inside, and it provides uh, a little bit of resistance to drought or um, like wet dry conditions. You're also seeing, I'll move my um, thing here, so you're also seeing a cyclopoida, um, which is, I hope I said that right, a copepod. Um, copepods are tiny crustaceans and they're found um, in all kinds of varieties of water sources. They are a, a major link in the food chain and are a food source for all kinds of organisms, including lots and lots of fish. You're also seeing a couple kinds of ciliates on the right side of the screen. Um, the one that's sort of bell-shaped is called a vorticella. So it uses its cilia or its like uh, finger structures to filter and look for food. All right, that is four minutes. So go ahead and finish up your drawing and we'll go ahead and we will go to the next one. All right, so I will put myself in a place here. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start our session. Okay, starting now. All right, so what you are viewing now is a Bluemont Cattail Pond. Uh, Bluemont Cattail Pond is located in Bluemont Park and is along the Washington and Old Dominion bike and um, walking trail. It's a very small wetland area and it represents a very important and often overlooked uh, water source, which is called um, a vernal pool. Um, sometimes they're called ephemeral pools. Um, vernal pools are um, get their name from ver vernal spring um, because they have a tendency to form or really get larger um, and more apparent during the spring rains. Um, or they're, they're temporary or largely changeable ponds and let wetland areas. These uh, type of pools go through a wet and dry cycle um, and some of them often completely disappear during dry spells and droughts. Um, vernal pools are generally defined because they by the absence of fish so they don't have fish in them which makes them really ideal habitats for frogs, salamanders, amphibians or things that are, uh, are predated upon by fish. So Bluemont Cattail Pond, as far as I have observed, never completely dries up, but it does experience cycles of drier and wetter periods. Um, if you've ever biked or jogged or walked by um, this area, you know that it's extremely loud because of all the frogs, um, especially in spring when the frogs are mating. So there are tons and tons and tons of frogs and salamanders in this particular location. So um, this kind of uh, wetland area that uh, has like a sort of cycle cycled nature to it, cyclical nature to it, um, is very common to Arlington County. Um, these types of tiny wetland areas um, used to be extremely common um, in the sort of Potomac uh, four mile run floodplain area. So uh, Arlington County, Alexandria, and much of um, kind of the adjacent Washington DC area used to be environments just like this. So what's really exciting about Bluemont Cattail Pond is that there's a wide variety of microorganisms that it supports. Um, this is probably the location that had the most variety that I sampled from um, just throughout the year. You can see um, where I am here in the square is uh, this is a more traditional amoeba. So this is what we really think of when we think of an amoeba is like a big blob that kind of goes around. Um, the, it's a soft-bodied creeper um, and 
what it does is it usually uh, surrounds its prey and um, basically just absorbs it into its body. In this um, image, you can see that there's like a little um, green dot. Um, I believe that's probably a chlorella and it's probably attempting to um, absorb that chlorella to eat it. So you can also see another pinellaria on here. In this, you can really see the big bubbles of fats that are stored in its body. Um, you're also seeing uh, on this slide a variety of um, desmids. That's a particular type of um, microscopic algae, uh, clostridiums and cosmariums. Uh, I will chat a little bit more about desmids in our next slide. All right. Okay, it's almost time. All right, that's our four minutes. So go ahead and finish up with your sketching here. Go ahead and go to the next slide. This will be hard for me to put myself in a place where I am unobtrusive. All right, so here I am now. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start our timer. And just so that you know, this will be our last full sketch of our session today. So we'll start. Okay, so we're looking at four mile run. So four mile run is one of our major waterways here in Arlington. It's a stream that begins with our neighbors in Fairfax County and ends with our neighbors in Alexandria. Um, and it flows as a tributary to the Potomac River. It's actually not four miles, it's about 9.35 miles in total. Um, there are some various historical um, explanations for this naming, but um, I think that this reminds me a lot of um, the kind of speculative ideas around like how did Chicken Alaska get its name and the, um, the story is, is that uh, they wanted to name it ptarmigan, which is the state bird of Alaska, but no one knew how to spell that, so they just decided to settle on chicken. So who knows? Um, there are probably multiple explanations for why Four Mile Run is named what it is. So um, Four Mile Run is a very, very important waterway, um, and it was once the site of several mills um, and historic locations, homesteads, um, and now it's one of our popular um, trail system sites. So excuse me, the W and OD trail kind of just immediately um, follows a lot of Four Mile Run. It provides critical habitat and drainage for our community as well. So what I did is I took several samples along Four Mile Run um, from where it kind of begins at Benjamin Benneker Park to where it kind of exits the county in Sherlington. What struck me is that there's not only a big diversity in the ecosystem of Four Mile Run, but also how different the stream could be um, depending on the location. So sometimes it's very, very, very small, very shallow, and sometimes it's quite large and deep. So what you're seeing on this slide is a really wide variety of clostridium. Um, they're roughly kind of moon shaped. They're, they're so beautiful. And um, they're part of the desmid order, as I had said previously. Um, desmids are primarily found in freshwater, um, but they can be found elsewhere. What's really fascinating is that we know from the study of these uh, single-celled algae that they are um, related to land plants. So they're related to the things that now live on land. So these are the an ancient ancestors of um, things like grasses and bushes and trees and all different kinds of plants that now live on the land with us. So we also have um, stentors. Uh, Stentors are trumpet-shaped single-celled organisms that filter feed. Um, they can actually be up to two millimeters long, and they're amongst the uh, largest uh, single-celled organisms um, available in, on Earth. So you can sometimes see a stentor with your naked eye or with a magnifying glass, which I think is pretty cool. Um, stentors will occasionally secrete a shell. It's called a lorica, I believe that's how you say it, and you can see that clearly he here. 
Um, we also have a possible heliozoan. Um, these are known as sun anima animalcules, which I think is a cute name for them. Um, that is just a general term for things that are shaped kind of um, sunshine-like, although what we now know is heliozoans are actually a very wide variety of organisms that aren't very well related to each other. All right, so we are almost done with our sketch here. All right. That is four minutes. Okay, excellent. All right, so I will go ahead and move myself up here to my location. So thank you for joining us for scientific sketching today. Um, there's also some resources I wanted to provide you if you wanted to get involved or wanted to know more about um, the like scientific art citizen science, that kind of thing. All right, so first of all, Arlington County has some wonderful programs that you can be a part of. So um, Arlington has a stream monitoring program as well as uh, stream cleanups and a Virginia master naturalist program. So um, these are all uh, volunteer programs. I have actually been a stream monitor and it's a lot of fun. We do macroinvertebrate counts. So that means you can actually, uh, macroinvertebrates are things you can actually see with your eyes as well as um, E. coli testing for the various waterways and salinity testing in the winter. So I highly recommend getting involved, checking it out, adopting a stream, doing stream cleanup, all of those kinds of cool things. All right, and as I mentioned, I'll go ahead and move myself down here. You can also color your own postcards. So you can order postcards from my project and color them yourself. Each one of them has an environmental message on the back that um, encourages folks to do some really good practices that can pr protect our waterways. So here, without further ado, is um, how you order your free postcard pack. So this is while supplies last. We've had um, hundreds of orders so far, so I encourage you to go and order yours if you want them as soon as possible. Um, and these are this link is all, also available on the Arlington Art Truck website, as well as the um, Arlington Arts uh, social media accounts and Arlington Art Truck Instagram. Um, I am on Instagram as well at at Studio Cornix. Um, I would love to see your sketches from today. I would love to hear from you to see if you thought had a particular thought about what an identification might be. Um, and we would just love to see what you're, you're doing and how you sketched um, during the session. So please reach out to us, um, tag us, let us know um, kind of like what you've done and show your sketches, scare, share your sketches. All right, so that is all I have for you today. So I'll go ahead and I'll go back and I'll leave this up so that you can just observe it here. All right, so I thank you so much for joining me today for my science sketch along. I appreciate it. Um, I hope that you enjoyed learning a little bit more about the microorganisms found in our community. Um, it's always good to remember that microorganisms are very sensitive to changes in the environment and they can tell us a lot about what might be going right or going wrong with our, um, our environment. Um, also, those microorganisms, like particularly like microalgae, um, will are responsible for about 50% of the Earth's atmospheric oxygen. So we also owe a lot to our microorganisms for helping us breathe, helping our environment stay healthy. All right, well, thank you so much, everybody. And I hope you have a good rest of your day and a great time at the virtual Arlington County Fair.